So let's talk now about uh, free trade and specialization. So uh, free trade, it came about uh, through the uh, 18th century British philosopher or Irish or Scottish, I'm not sure. Uh, he said something like, uh, you know, a good household master is the one that would produce at home what would be uh, expensive to buy from elsewhere and uh, buy from elsewhere what would be uh, expensive to produce at home. And this leads us to a specialization. Uh, and uh, that means that countries uh, will do better if they specialize in certain industries where they have a comparative advantage. So uh, my question for you, Ryan, is uh, if Morocco were to specialize in something, what would it be? Something that, that is currently disregarded in Morocco and uh, it would probably give, uh, you know, it represents an opportunity of economic growth and uh, employment opportunities. So this is a very interesting question. I actually have a lot to say on the topic of trade. I've been studying supply chain and just for a long time. I think even two months ago, my answer would have been slightly different because of the recent coronavirus 19 outbreak in China and now it's going all around the world. And two months ago, I would have said, the system is working fine. You have certain things produced in certain countries, whether it's raw goods or input goods that are shipped overseas and then the final assembly is done. For example, Renault imports parts here to Morocco and then they assemble the cars here and then they sell them here and then ship them around the world. However, because of this coronavirus outbreak, I think what you're going to see in the next two months is the vulnerabilities of a global system that is reliant upon just-in-time logistics. When you have all these countries specializing in different things and everyone becomes dependent on everyone else, when there's a disruption in the chain in one area, for example, China, there are second and third or effects that go to South Korea, Japan. Now we're seeing impacts in Germany, in France, and it's going to have a ripple effect all the way through to the consumption of the final good. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you're going to see in the next one to three months is you're going to see ruptures of stock. You're going to see shortages. You're going to see things completely sold out. Um, and this just-in-time global interconnectedness of the supply chain is going to cause a lot of problems. And so when you ask me the question, what should Morocco specialize in? Well, my answer is, well, the fact that Morocco has sort of been very measured in its internationalization and its globalization in terms of becoming reliant on imports and allowing the currency to float and being very interconnected with the rest of the world, I think what you're actually going to see is that Morocco is going to weather the storm, so to speak. Morocco is going to absorb the impacts of this virus much better than many other countries for several reasons. One, twice a year Morocco shuts down during Ramadan and August. Essentially things come to a standstill or used to that. So I think if this happens because of the virus, I think Morocco is actually going to deal with it better than other countries like in Europe or in the United States. Mm. Especially it's coming when Ramadan is, is coming to us. So. Right. So it'll be natural to just kind of shut yeah. things down. Yeah. Secondly, Morocco is not an economy with just-in-time logistics. There are many countries in which they receive their stock of goods every week or two weeks and they sell out completely and they need to be replenished. Mm. This is uh, a very good example in China. The relationship between China and Japan, for example. Toyota developed a system where the parts for their assembly of vehicles would arrive on one day and they would use those parts within the next 48 to 72 hours wow. and they would need to be replaced. And the reason you do this is because inventory has a cost. Mm, and so if you can reduce the amount of inventory you're holding across the supply chain, you reduce, you reduce your overall costs and you increase your profits. However, if there's a direct disruption in the supply chain, that throws the whole system out of whack. Morocco is going to be stronger 
during a time of supply chain disruption because it does not rely on weekly supplies or monthly supplies. For example, I'm sure everyone of our listeners knows this. When you go to Carrefour or Marjan, you will see a certain product and you'll see a very large supply. And maybe a month later, there won't be any. Mm. It's because the supply chain in Morocco, many people will go overseas, they'll buy a very large quantity of something mm. and they'll import it into Morocco and they'll sell it until it's gone. Mm. So as a result, the stocks in Morocco, I think are much higher for certain kinds of items. Additionally, the, the basics are produced here in Morocco. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, milk. A lot of the very essential elements of life are produced here in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the global supply chain is not going to have a negative impact on that. Mm -hmm.